afternoon to you. Amen. Holy greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That song by the spiritual angels, blessing my soul here this afternoon. Amen. Praise the Lord. The joy I have inside. The world didn't get it. <laughs> and the world sure can't take it away. Amen. We bless the Lord today. Right here in our lovely sanctuary. Right here in the city of Riceboro, Georgia. Can the church say amen? I bring you holy greeting from the True Bone Church of Christ Deliverance Center in cooperation with my pastor is the Honorable Dr. Apostle Richard Walthall Jr., the founder and overseer of the True Bone Church of Christ. And I'm your host for just a few moments of your time. Can the church say amen? I'm the natural evangelist for the True Bone Church of Christ Deliverance Center. Amen. And we thank you, amen, for tuning in. Amen. And I won't be before you very long. Amen. I got some announcements to make at the end of the service. Amen. But we thank you for tuning in. I'm going back. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going back too far. Amen. But how many of you realize today that you are on a journey? Thank you for coming in. I, I see you coming in very nicely. How many of you realize that you are on a journey? And on this journey, praise the Lord, there are going to be some ups and there are going to be some downs. Amen. Praise God. And what I want to leave with you this evening, amen, praise God, is that, amen, you are probably in a storm right now. Or you just came out of a storm. Or you're about to go into a storm. What I'm talking about, I'm talking, I'm talking about the storm of life. Let me be very clear with you this evening. I don't want to, amen, hold you long. I'm not talking about a physical storm. I'm not talking about a hurricane or a tornado. Oh, as I was coming in to the sanctuary, I heard on the news, amen, praise God, that up in Greenland, the, the icebergs are melting, and amen, they said there was so much water, had, had uh, ice had melted that it could cover the whole state of West Virginia, and amen, I wonder why the world is so uptight about a global warming, he saw the earth is warming up. Somebody asked me, he said, well, preacher, man, do you believe in global warming? I said, I don't know about global warming, but I can tell you the Bible said it'll be fire next time. Can the church say amen? Now, 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 amen. The world will put it into a circumstance, but they'll want you to know that since the world is heating up, it's all over. But while you are here, I want to talk about the storm. Some people don't want to go into a storm. They want it to be as smooth as I. Some Christians like it that way. It's easy to praise God when everything is going lovely lovely. It's easy to give God praise when everything is hunky dory and everything is going. But when the storm of life comes, that's when you find out where you are in Christ. It comes to you quick. A phone call. From up north, that could be a storm in your life. When you pick up the telephone, you are easy, and then they give you the word that someone, a loved one, has passed. Talking about a storm. But I want to leave you with this. I'm not talking about a physical storm. As I said before, I'm talking about a spiritual storm. If you have your Bibles, go with me real quickly. To the book of Isaiah. And I'll read it for you. The 43rd chapter. That's where our text out tonight. In the second verse. When thou passest through the waters. I will be with thee. And through the river. They shall not overflow. Thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon 
David. Talking about a spiritual stone. Many folks, amen, when we talk about that, they think that when you're going through, God must have, don't love you. Come on, somebody. But I come by to let you know, amen, yo, yo, the trying of your faith, work in patience. Sometimes, amen, God will allow certain things to happen to you, amen, to see if you're going to stand the test. Who I'm talking to this evening. Many of us don't want to be tested. We just think, amen. Uh, but I've come out and let you know this evening. Seven God will cost you everything. And then it'll cost you nothing. Or someone didn't catch that. It'll cost you the lively of this world. And then it won't cost you nothing. Because when you really look at it. Nothing for nothing leaves nothing. We're living in a fallen state. This whole world is not your home. You just pass it through. That's why I don't build up all these things down there. Someone was telling me, I'm thinking about getting me an electric car. Amen. Praise God. A Tesla. Amen. Because I want to beat the fuel prices. I want to do all of that, amen. But I come out and let you know, build yourself up in heaven this evening. But a canker worm can't destroy. Because everything that you can see with your natural eye. Oh, hear me good here this evening. I feel like preaching. If you can see it with your natural eye, I drop out and let you know, amen. Praise God that it's going away. You can't pack that tin rum house in no casket. That car you're driving ain't going nowhere. Many people are falling in love, amen, with a false tradition. I got to have it where I can get it. I want you to know, amen, praise God, you are only, just only a test. Get mad. That's a storm. 
You might as well say, ouch. Oh, they're going to strike that down too. God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. So I guess the, the Christian conservative is going to strike all that down. But I come out and let you know, don't let the storm of life stop you. Keep serving the almighty God. Going through a storm is just like being in a fire. Sometimes God will put you in a spiritual storm so he can get the glory. Did you hear what I said? Sometimes he will put you in a storm for he can get the glory. So he did with Job. So he did with Peter. So he did with Moses. Abraham. Everybody has been tested. So I, what about you? We have gotten to a point now we don't want to be tested. As I said before, these storms come to you quick. Newsman will tell you there's a hurricane coming up I 95. It'll be here Wednesday morning. Everybody packing up and getting the high ground. Well, you have to warn them when they said this. this, this Physical storm is coming. Everybody packing up and getting out of the way. But I'm telling you right now, there's a spiritual storm coming in your life. That the sure as you're looking at me right now. You either in the storm right now, or you're going, or you're about to go in, or you just came out. Your life is constantly, constantly. The enemy, he made a bet if I can just pull more on this thing, if I can just keep this child of God down, he won't press it real, he won't press it well. But I come out and let you know this evening, God said, I put no more on you than you can manage. If he take you to it, he'll show sure not bring you to it. You got to remember this quote. In the book of Isaiah, let me read it again. When you pass it through the water, I will be with thee. And through the river, they shall not overthrow thee. There is no weapon formed that can, that proper will overtake you tonight. That's why sometimes when I'm going through my trial, that's why sometimes when the devil, he comes to attack me, I just put him up a smile and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You got to learn to put that word on, this, on Satan. Some of you were buckle in shame when that, when that test come, when that storm come, you buckle up. That ain't no time to buckle up. Guard yourself up. Guard yourself up when the storm come. Take it with a scribe. So now the people fast. Want everybody to know they fast. They come in there. What wrong with you? I ain't eating nothing all day. But the Bible said, Whatever you do in secret, God will reward you openly. That when you're going through the fire, you want everybody to know you're going through the fire. I can't pay my life bill. I ain't got no food on the table. I ain't got nothing going on. Buckle up. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've never seen my seed bad bread. I marvel at people when they get in a storm. They just got to let everybody know I'm in, a, I'm, I'm, I'm in bad shape.
want you to know if you can weather the storm. See, uh, I know a little bit about storms. They told me back in 1985 that he won't last. Uh -uh. Then his brother won't last. He'd be right back all oh, he with us, having a good time, they thought. They thought that I couldn't give up my marijuana. They thought that I couldn't give up my dope. They thought that I couldn't give up my smoking. They thought I couldn't give up my drinking. And you know what? They were right. I couldn't do anything until I found out that greater is he that's in me when I turn it over to Jesus. I want you to know today I'm still here. I'm still looking up Jesus. They said I wouldn't make it, but I'm still holding on. They said you wouldn't make it, but you're still holding on. If you're a child of God, you've been through the storm. I drop out and let you know there's another storm coming. He's riding on a cloud. And every eye shall see him. But I heard one lady tell me, she told me years ago, she said, when I see him, I want to be just like him. I'm talking to. You may be asking yourself tonight, why not me? Won't you know when you go through a storm, the Lord increase your vision? How many of you realize the Holy Spirit allows you to see what the world can't see? The Holy Spirit allows you to hear what the world can't hear. That's why they look at you funny. You wonder why they're looking at you funny. That's why they're looking at the disciples so awkward. You can tell when you are passed from darkness into the light. Now watch me now. I'm going somewhere. Light shines in darkness. The Bible says men don't light a candle in the just to light it. When you turn on a light in your room, burn light. So it is with the child of God. Huh? So it is with the child of God. When you walk into a room, you illuminate. Huh? It's the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And you thought, well, they don't like me because uh, 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 what I'm wearing. No, that ain't the reason. They don't want they don't like me because of what. No, they, they don't like you because you came from among them. You separated yourself through the world of truth. Truth is in you. And some of us will give them that. The Bible said in Galatians 5 and 1, said, Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. But some of us, and not all of us, but some of us, amen, we go right back. Just like putting a suit on a pig. How I many you know you put a suit on a pig out the wild, he go water right back into the mud. That's how Christians are. You dress them up, they go right back. Why? They haven't got rooted. They haven't got rooted in this world. <laughs> Now, Paul said you can consume milk of the world. You got to eat the word. But I like that in Isaiah. So he was with me, Shadrach, and Abednego. So he was with David. So he was with Joshua. So he was with Abraham. So he was with Peter. So he was with Rahab. Huh? So he was with them, so he is with you. He's right there. You can feel it. He's right there. Come on, somebody. See, the enemy is made of bad. He's better than you want. You won't understand what you have. Like I said a few weeks ago, amen, your word of God is a weapon. You got to know how to use the word. That's all Jesus used was the word. And if Jesus had not use the word, what about you and me? The 
talking about a storm. You got to trust God in a storm. God hears and answers every prayer. Not on your timetable. How many people say, I'm just sitting here waiting on the Lord. Abraham started to wait, but he couldn't wait. Huh? Y'all know the story. I'm just sitting here waiting on the Lord. Wait now, he said. Some folks don't know how to wait. God taking, hey look here, God taking too much time. I, I, I got to do it myself. I want a family, but I, I, I got to do it myself. Learn how to wait on the Lord. Amen. But like I said, God comes when he's never late, but he's always on time. Yeah, they said I wouldn't make it. Back in the year 1985, he, he won't last. I want you to know I'm still holding on to God's unchanging hand. And you are too. Don't let no devil shake your faith. I mean, if you ain't saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, then why is the devil bothering you? Old Testament. 
Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, to fulfill the law. Huh? If it was wrong, then it's still wrong. I don't care what them crooked politicians say. Some of these, some of these ministers have got so hooked up with the Hollywood crowd, they'll say anything. I ain't afraid to tell them. So preach up in Philadelphia now. He talking truth and no one want to hear him. They ain't got to beat the big screen, but he's being heard. Because they're telling what? The truth. Papa said you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And who the son set free is free indeed. I'm down out here in Riceboro, Georgia. I'm standing on the truth. Come hell or high water. I don't care if they got a lesbian church. I still, I still stand on it. That's a storm. Two men ain't got no business kissing on one another. What is this? Two women ain't got no business loving on one another. What is this? Oh, preacher man, this is the new way. No, there ain't nothing new about that, honey, baby. I still have old. Baby, you need to read a little bit. <laughs> Got tattoos hanging all over, mopping up the body, cutting on the body. People got tattoos now where they don't want nobody to know they got them. You know, imagine how the devil, the devil like throwing stuff in your face. Come on, somebody. They'll put a tattoo where everybody can see it. You're nasty. Don't get mad with the preacher, man. I just try. You want to get mad with me? Get mad with the mega preachers. Because I don't say what they say. Huh? They've been trying to get me off the side of my life ever since I got on it, but I'm still here. Why? Because God won't be here. Somebody's scrolling down. Somebody's scrolling down right now on KPT. Somebody's scrolling down right now and they're hearing the same thing. I'm about finished. I got one more scripture. And I'm going to leave you alone. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Two and nine. One of my favorite scriptures. But it is written. Oh Lord have mercy. I have not seen. Nor the ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man. The thing which God has prepared for them that love him. I got by to let you know this afternoon that after the storm, after the storm, sunshine, blue sky, after you have suffered a while, good God Almighty, sometimes you got to suffer a little bit. Sometimes you got to go through the fire. I drop by to let you know, have you ever seen a hurricane? Come down here in the Southern Empire, right here in coastal Georgia. After the storm had passed by, here comes sunshine, blue sky. I go away to prepare a place for you. That where I'm at, you may be also. He said, in my father's house, there are many, many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't have said so. I don't know about you this afternoon, but I've been in the storm. I'm passing through. I've been in the storm too long. Good God Almighty, God has brought me through. But I'm still pushing my way on. I'm still on the battlefield. What about you tonight?